Hello, hello and welcome to Astrology Coaching by Anatoly. We are going to proceed with the other video, the other yearly prediction 2024. It is, turn for, it is the turn for all people who have Virgo Ascendant and Virgo Moon Sign. It is a little bit more specific transit for all Virgos, so yeah, it will be... Mm, let's say it will be interesting for you, but uh, uh, before proceeding with uh, the Virgo, uh, Virgo Moon and Virgo Ascendant, I just want to say my introduction, that is really important. Uh, and uh, I want to, pay, to say that... Um, Pay, pay attention to, uh, to the fact that this is uh, Astrology Coaching by Anatoly is based on Vedic Astrology. Vedic Astrology is different from the Western Astrology. Uh, Vedic Astrology is using the sidereal system while Western Astrology is using the tropical system. And they are totally different systems and all the planets from the Western Astrology uh, will go with around 23, uh, 24 degrees depending on your year of birth. Uh, backwards, it will go. They will go backwards in Vedic astrology. So all the planets in Western astrology will go 23, 24 degrees backwards in Vedic astrology. This is due to the um, um, uh, precession of the equinox. This is astronomical event that is happening every um, every year. I mean, every 72 years, uh, there is a change of the point of the equino the equinox. Uh, with one degree. But this is a very long story. If you want, you can buy my book Vedic Astrology Easy and Simple or you can check my channel. I already explained uh, this astronomical event. So what is important, if you don't know your Vedic chart, you have to first know your Vedic chart, see what is your ascendant and what is your moon sign and then watch this video. Okay? The other thing is that uh, this, the, general, the yearly prediction video, they are based on the general transit, the general information associated with the transit of of Saturn, Jupiter, Rahu and Ketu and uh, uh, it is really important for me like I'm a Virgo and I want to be um, a person who help other people so it is important to, for me to say that everything depends on your natal chart uh, and your planetary periods, your dashes uh, if, uh, and they will determine what events will happen and how the transits of these big planets will influence your life. This is important. And the other thing, of course, you have to check the video for your ascendant sign and for your moon sign. The ascendant is giving physical material opportunities while a moon is giving more karmic events in your life. So, now we are going to proceed with Virgo. Virgo, uh, it is really important time for Virgos because uh, Ketu will be in your first house and Rahu will be in your seventh house. Saturn will be in your sixth house and Jupiter till May will be in your 8th house and then it will go in your ninth house after May. So you see that Ketu, the planet of the um, Karka of spiritual growth and spiritual liberation, the Karka of death and rebirth, the, the, the Karka, the indicator that detaches you from, from all material is over your ascendant. So this is really karmic period where you will need to pay focus on yourself and uh, you will be detached from the world and everything that is not yours Will be, sw will be wiped away. Uh, you will need to change, you need to find who you are. And I have always said that Ketu <coughs> is not one of my favorite plans, to be honest. Uh, this is a point, of course. Uh, it makes you, it, it gives you lessons in order to grow spiritually. Because in this life, you can grow only if you, if you have some kind of pain. Uh, so definitely Ketu will make you detached from the world and you will see you will need um, help in some way. I have noticed that all people uh, who have transits of Ketu over their ascendant on, or over their moon sign, they go to astrologers, psychologists, they need help, they need to find, um, to find peace. So Ketu will help you grow spiritually but will give you lessons in order to grow which is something normal. So this is really important transit for you guys and, and girls. So um, Ketu over the Ascendant is a period of detachment of everything that is material in order to find the real you. So it's a, it is important period. Arahu in the seventh house will give you many opportunities for relationship, but there is one but. But you have to find the balance with Ketu because Ketu will detach you from the world 
and uh, you will not feel happy entirely, to be honest, with yourself. You need, especially if you are, if you are in the dash of Ketu. Of course, if you are not in the dash of Ketu, the effect of the transit will be not so strong. But uh, you need, uh, for example, to read book about psychologists, go to astrologers, uh, have some, your own spiritual practice if you want, in order to make Ketu uh, in a good shape, to balance the effect of Ketu. And when you balance the effect of Ketu, you'll be able to, uh, to pay attention to the others. Because Rahu in 7th house will give you a lot of opportunities for love, marriage, especially with foreigners who have foreign culture, foreign, foreign religion. Why not? foreign religion. Um, so yeah, this is important period for you. Uh, Saturn in the sixth house is another important transit because Saturn in, in um, sixth house always gives some lessons associated with health, routine, daily work, conflicts, arguments. Uh, when Saturn is transiting over sixth house, it can give you new job, new environment, new daily life, but you have to put the effort, you have to work hard for that. Uh, Saturn is a planet that makes you work hard, but it, it will always, 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 always give you the golden fruits when you follow the rules of Saturn. This is important. And the other transit, uh, Jupiter is uh, in your 8th house till May. Uh, another bad house, Dushtana, uh, you know, 6, 8 and 12. So you have a lot of... Um, Mm, special transits, Ketu over your ascendant, Saturn in the 6th, Jupiter in 8th, so you have to pay attention to your health for sure, your mental, physical and emotional health. Jupiter in 8th house, um, depending on your natal chart, it can give good and bad uh, effect, uh, results. Uh, if you are dealing with um, uh, other people's money, inheritance, insurance, astrology, if you have business in psychology, astrology, you can earn a lot of money during this period, but you have to change and you have to transform and there will be expansion of this house. So uh, transformation, death and rebirth, something to, to be able to adapt and change will be very important for you. And after May, Jupiter will go in your ninth house, which is a, be a better transit, I think, because ninth house is the house of uh, spirituality, yeah, in some way, traveling, education, religion, philosophy, good luck, opportunities, optimism. So uh, after May, the transits will be much better when Jupiter uh, goes away from the eighth house. So you have more luck and more optimism. It is best, it's a good time to travel, to enjoy life, to start some, starting something, to publish or something, to go to coach, for example, why not? And it will be a better period for you, for sure. But remember, Ketu over the Ascendant is a specific period, a period of detachment and change and finding yourself. So pay attention to that, okay? So the next one will be Libra a Moon Sign and Libra Ascendant. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Hello, hello and thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, you can subscribe to my channel Astrology Coaching by Anatoly and you can check the other videos. I have really nice and interesting videos about Vedic Astrology, houses, planets, zodiac signs, transits. I have videos about uh, your personality, how to find more about your personality, how to find your mission of your life. So check the other videos in the channel. And of course, if you want a private consultation, if you want to know more about your NATO, personal NATO chart, you can check the consultation options in my website, www.astrology-coaching.com. Uh, of course, uh, you can check the links uh, in the description of the, vi uh, the video. You can find everything there. And if you want to learn more about Vedic Astrology, I have one really, really uh, nice uh, online course for beginners, Vedic Astrology for beginners in the platform of Thinkific. Um, this is an online course which is uh, easy and simple with uh, easy words, easy explanation. There are PDF files with information, there are pre-recorded videos and of course after every lesson there is a test. I'm a Virgo and I always put tests at the end so I I'm want to be sure that you have learned whatever the, the information there in this uh, 
in this uh, online pre-recorded video course for Vedic Astrology for beginners. And of course, you can check my books on Amazon. I have two books, Vedic Astrology, Easy and Simple, and Nakshatras in Vedic Astrology, Easy and Simple. These books are really great, they are really nice, and uh, I think they will be very useful for you if you want to put the background, uh, the background knowledge for your Vedic Astrology. Uh, so thank you for watching again and see you soon.